good day, metalheads. Hope that you're staying safe and healthy with everything that is going on. In today's video, I am going to go over how I went about painting this Ouroboros, and I hope I said the name right, forgive me if I did not, uh, this Ouroboros Miniatures 75mm Cyberpunk figure. This one is called the Gunslinger. This one is a model that is one of the, was one of the extra choices that was a $40 add-on when the Studio X Kickstarter was going on. And so I chose the girl. I'm so glad that I did. This model seriously was so much fun to paint. I absolutely love this model. Sorry, I'm grabbing something so I don't forget. Okay, so uh, I know that some, a lot of, there were people saying that they like when I do these videos, when I go through and explain how I went about painting something. If you want to catch it while it's still on Twitch, there are still videos of me going through the process fully of painting this model. So be sure to follow us on Twitch and also be sure to subscribe. And be sure you can also feel free to put in the comments below if you want as you go along. Tell us some favorite colors or tips and tricks that we've shared here in this video today. And I'll also be sure to put in the comments below what company this came from and we do have discount codes for a couple of the paints that I will be featuring and I'll be sure to put that in the description as well so be sure to check that out and without further ado let's get started now bear with me because as you can see there's a lot of stuff on this 75 millimeter model and I will go through and explain to you what paints I used or if there's certain techniques that I used and things like that okay so how about for funsies, let's start off with the hair. The hair that I did is a hot pink. And if you look on the bottom there in the shaded areas, you see that I went through and what I did was I added in glazes of purples and blues. I highlighted up to a white and this is fluorescent pink hair. How did I do that? Glad you asked. I'm about to tell you. ADD, where is the paint? There we go. Here is the main color that I used, FX Floor Experience. This is a scale color, scale 75. There is a U.S. distribution center, so you don't have to worry about international shipping killing you. And that's scale75usa.com is where you can get scale 75. And they have other companies in there too. Like you can also get the Chimera paints from there, and you can also get Ferro miniatures and other companies from there as well. So just in general, be sure to check out the site. But either either way, here is the main color that was used for the fluorescent pink for the hair, FX Floor Experience. And then colors that were used for the shading of it. There is some hexed lichen by Game Air that was used in some of the lining of, of the hair. Okay, so there was some of that. And there was some dark blue that was done. It was the Imperial Blue, I, I believe, from Game Air, which I couldn't grab right away. So I don't have that in front of me, but just to give you a basic idea. But there was uh, dark purples, dark blues that were used. An example of a color that you could use is Pro Acryl and Transparent Blue. And you could probably mix that in with the Hexed Lichen to add another shade color if you want ideas on other ways to shade hot pink hair. But yeah, it was highlighted up to a white. I used Reaper, I believe a Reaper Master Series white if I'm not mistaken. So you can feel free to do that. I used a fine detail brush and went in in short deliberate strokes to get that hair highlight look going. And that's how I did the hair. The guns and the gun holsters. That was a little, that's a little simpler. <laughs> I started off doing the main color I used is Turbo Dork in Six Shooter. This is a dark blue-gray steel color. And I will be sure to put in the description box below, there is a discount code that we have through Turbo Dork where you get 20% off your first order. But this is what was mainly used for the guns and for the holsters here on the sides. Okay. I did add a little bit of hexed lichen to the color in some areas and it added a nice touch of dimension to that metallic color. And then to highlight, I used Game Air in Chrome. This is like seriously one of the colors that you totally need in your life. And I edge highlighted when I did the Chrome, just so that you're aware. And I did that on the guns and on the holster. Okay, so let me put that aside so I don't forget. Now. Let's talk about the metallics that are done on the arms, the shoulders, the back, and 
the visor okay and on the sides there because she's more like an android you know kind of deal going on and those are also done in turbo door colors you see that there's some orange and some yellow okay and it's in the front on her chest too or you see on the shirt so the colors used was turbo dock in multi-pass and turbo dock in gold rush now gold rush looking back i probably should have used a different gold still turbo dork but a different gold and the reason why i say this is because this one has bigger metal flake in it but by the time i made the decision that i should have went with something else i already went a bit far in but it is still a really nice bright gold and it was a great color to go with the orange i just would have picked uh one of the other turbo dork golds that had a smaller metallic flake so that way it wasn't i didn't have to do as many coats as I had to do because multi-pass I had to do less coats than with the gold in order to keep doing full coverage because of the larger metallic flake but even so a bright gold will go nice so if you don't have turbo dork and you want to use something different that is completely and utterly fine so that's how I got the shoulders done and everything else you see in the back there okay that is multi-pass and orange on the sides is the gold with the gold rush the circular parts there are done in multi-pass. Now let's talk about what I did for shading. For shading, I did a few things, actually. I kept going back and forth, doing different things, and I lined with, I did some transparent blue, and then I also used for shading, like you see here on the bottom of the arms and stuff, I not only did some of this Green Stuff World Intensity Ink in the Verdigree Green, in the verde green sorry i read i read that wrong my apologies but i also used a lot of the vallejo model wash in dark green because that dark green ended up being a really nice contrast to that orange and to the gold without sitting there and having to do five or six different color washes and stuff like that so that actually worked out really good and i really love this wash anyway i use it for basing i use it for all kinds of stuff and it's really great again with the highlighting I did take model air in chrome and I did mix it in with the turbo door colors in order to do a highlight so you should be able to notice for example on the shoulder and I'm sorry if it's not that clear on the camera I'm using one of my stream cameras for this it should show you a bit of a silver mix with the orange and it actually blended in really really well and I did the model air in chrome for some of the edge highlighting as well and that really worked out really well and you could see here all the shading here on the bottom and I glazed that in gradually and it kept getting a heavier look to it and I really like how that came out I'm very happy with how these metallics came out if you hear a sudden noise that's the fan with the computer I'm gonna tell you about the jeans really quick some people were like oh my god how did you do that the jeans were so hard actually the jeans were not hard at all and you're gonna be really excited when I tell you about this the main color that I use for the jeans GW technical Citadel Technical in Night Haunt Gloom. Remember with the Night Haunts when they came out with these colors, they came out with this and what was it called? The, the green was Hex Wraith or something like that. I have that one too, but I just don't remember the name off the top of my head. I'm bad with names with some of these. But the, this is the main color that I use for the denim. You see how it has that grayish blue kind of like denim wood anyway? So I painted them up as if they were skinny jeans. See that? So that's the main color that I used throughout the whole thing and then what I did was I thinned down some white made sure there wasn't too much paint on the brush using a fine detail brush and then went in in short deliberate strokes of little lines to sit there and do those stressed marks like you would usually typically see on denim and that's how I did the jeans and when I went in to do the shading let me tell you about the shading when I did the shading I did a mix of, I believe it was Hexed Lichen by Game Air and Night Haunt Gloom in order to do the shading. So you see how it's a little darker, like in between the legs and stuff like that? I glazed that in. I thinned it down to a glaze and kept going over it. Took a little while. That was the part that took the longest. I also made sure to do some Hexed Lichen, a mix of the Hexed Lichen and Night Haunt Gloom where there was more Hexed Lichen than Night Haunt Gloom and then went in and do, did the shading, lined the shading underneath those creases in the jeans so that way they stood out more 
and then I put a little more white in those in some of those creased areas to stand out more and that's how I did the jeans the jacket and the boots the jacket and the boots are actually a lot simpler than it looked and I didn't expect it to end up being so simple but it did so what I did was okay so initially when I prepped and primed the model I primed it in Zenithal uh, Zenithal priming Zenithal highlighting so meaning I started out priming the whole model in black and then did the highlighted areas you know went in in a certain direction for the lighting and did the priming in white okay and when I did that I went over and I did the green stuff world intensity ink in ver verde green all over I did it all over and it ended up giving this effect mostly so I hardly had to do anything right and then what I did though to go over the shading to go over and do some shading was I basically did a mix of some Citadel and Nuln Oil, don't get excited. They don't come in these big bottles. I just buy them in bulk and put them in big bottles. And Hex Lichen. So that it all ties in with the other colors. Because there was Hex Lichen used as a shade in the jeans. Hex Lichen that was used on the shirt, which I'm going to go over that in a second. And that's what I did. And so when I went in to do some further highlighting on this, what I did was I did a mix of a light yellow which where the hell is that light yellow that I used? I believe it was this one. This is from Midnight Heroes, the Super Chibi Acrylics. I used some of this light yellow and I mixed it with some of the Verde Green and a little bit of white, like Reaper Master Series white. And then I lightly went over and that's how you see on those creases that there's higher highlighting going on. And I did a little bit more on the tops here in certain areas. I didn't go too crazy because I just felt like it would end up looking weird if I did. And then, you know, like I said, shaded down using some Nuln Oil and Hex Lichen. And that's how I did the jacket. And that's also how I did the boots. And that's how you see if I did that. Okay. Now, the asphalt. I ended up doing this in asphalt because of oh, the base. Because a lot of cyberpunk scenes have it where they're located in a city or industrial and there's always roads and asphalt and buildings and what have you right so this is the direction i ended up going with the base and i wanted to keep it simple also to not take away from the model itself okay and the main three colors that i use which if you don't have this triad you really need to and it's by secret weapon miniatures let me i need my hand so i can put these out and show these to you and this is from Secret Weapon Miniatures, uh, Secret, yeah, Secret Weapon, and this is, this is where you get like the washes, but they also have weathering paints that are amazing. And so I use the rubber triad. So this is tire black, which is great for so many different uses, rubber and rubber highlight. So what I like about these is that there's not only a gray in there, but there's also some blue in there, and it just really makes the colors stand out really really nice so this is mainly the colors that we used and then when i shaded down on these and did washes and everything there's some known oil in there there's some pro acryl and transparent black i also used pro acryl and transparent brown which i could have sworn i had in front of me but i think i put it away but i did that because underneath the asphalt there's some earth so you can't really see it that well if you see it close up in person you'll see it but i did that just glazed it in some just so that you could see it's just a touch not a crazy amount and that's what i put in there when i highlight it up even higher and did the dry brushing around the stone I used this old GW foundation color which I think I could be wrong I don't remember the name of this maybe this was Astronomicon gray or something like that but it's a very light blue gray and that's what I used for when I did the final highlighting all around on the ground there on the asphalt do you see that okay so with the edges, now the edges of the base, just so that you're aware, there's a certain process that I always do, and it's because it's really durable and it really holds up, and that is Badger Steinal Res Black Primer, and I'll make sure to put the discount code that we have in the description box below as well so that you can take advantage of getting these awesome Steinal Res primers. They're great. They're like seriously my favorite primers. And I mix it with some Vallejo. There's Vallejo Matte Varnish in here. 
I had a bunch of bottles. I put it in a larger bottle, but that's what this is, is Vallejo matte varnish. And then I painted all around the edges of the base. Now I do about, I want to say two to three coats usually does it for all around the base. Okay. And I signed the bottom and everything. And that's how it pretty much comes out around the bases. All right. So let me think I covered that. Okay. The straps that are on her legs here are the same colors that I used for the asphalt minus the brown. So there, the secret weapon rubber triad was used. I did add a little bit of white into the rubber highlight in order to edge highlight at the top. Okay. And I did the same thing with the belt and the metal was done with some GW, the Citadel and lead belcher. Oh, that's also what was done for the silver in the arms too. There's like a little line of silver on the arms. That was done with lead belcher and also uh, some chrome. But that's what I did for the buckles on the belts and highlighted in chrome. But also the rubber triad was used for the belt as well with an edge highlight on the top. Okay. Let me think if I'm missing anything. Okay. The shirt. So the shirt was inspired by a cyberpunk photo that I saw in when I was referencing Google images and the shirt in the photo was actually done with like a teal, but instead, because I already used sort of like a blue green or whatever on the jacket, I decided to go with doing the model air and the game air rather in hexed lichen for the main color of the shirt. And then I did little squiggles to give it like an eighties ish kind of design on the shirt. And I did that with a fine detail brush using the following bright colors I used. Let me grab that for you. This is GW Citadel in Temple Guard Blue, which I transferred to a dropper bottle. I also used P3 in Necrotite Green for a bright neonish kind of green. This is the Super Chibi Acrylics. I know it's seen better days. It got air, it got airbrushed on. Uh, this is in the color Orchid. This is from Midnight Heroes. I used this yellow, which is called Empress, which is also a Midnight Heroes, the Chibi Acrylics. This is made by, wait, what's the name of the, co the company that mainly does this? C-Pop. I think it's like Coldcraft or C-Pop or something that mainly does these, these paints. But this is the yellow that I used. And then Citadel Layer in Fire Dragon Bright, which I also tran uh, transported into, transferred rather, into a dropper bottle. Okay. And those are the colors that I use. And I went in with a fine detail brush and did these 80s-ish little squiggly look there. Sorry, I was trying to get this camera more in focus. It was trying to be defiant. But that is how I did the shirt, my friends. Okay. Now the visor. The visor I kind of fought with. I didn't do a visor in a long time. And so I was kind of going back and forth on it. But the main colors that I used is I used some Temple Guard Blue. I did go in to do some shading on that blue with some Pro Acryl transparent blue. And I also used the GW, the Blood Letter Blue uh, glaze. Uh, was it called Blood Letter Blue? No, something else blue. Anyway, I, I used the, the blue glaze and with that. And then I also, for the orange, the first orange I used, I didn't like. I think it looked like crap. And then I went back over the orange with the Fire Dragon Bright. Went back and forth in between the Temple Guard Blue and the Fire Dragon Bright to blend them up. Highlighted the blue with some white. And that's how I made the visor. And then go over it with some gloss varnish to give some shine. The visor was done with Turbo Dork. The colors in, um, this one was done in, what was this one? Multi-Pass, the orange. And it was highlighted up with chrome mi mixed together and then at the very edges the very where the light hits the most i did just chrome that's why you see that's exceptionally bright up there okay so we did that now make sure i'm not missing anything oh the skin all right the skin so the skin what i did was it was now i love 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 these paints this is when vallejo and nocturno and Nocturna, sorry, I can't talk today. Vallejo and Nocturna joined forces and made these skin colors. Love them. I did natural flesh for the base coat. Went in and did some shading with a few other colors, okay? I used in the shading, I did use some Vallejo dark green wash or some other similar color wash. I know I used the dark green in there. I love that color though, so it was probably that. And then I also mixed these two colors together and glaze layered them on top of each other. This is also from the same set. This is the fairy from the fairy flesh set, the ones with the Caucasian skin 
and these colors this is from the fairy flush set i believe okay and so i used let me put this down for a second so that way i can handle better and show you so this is purple shadow and this is burned flesh and i used both of those for the shading I, there were points that i mixed them together glazed them and and put them on individually and layered them and i just kind of just kept futzing around with it until I was happy with the skin and I very much am you can see here there's some shading done here and then I highlight up and when I highlight it up with the skin I took the natural flesh color and I mixed it with this with the white flesh just a little and then highlighted up the most up there at the tip of the nose all right for the lips I believe I did a purple and I'm sorry that I don't remember off to hand what I what what I did I'm pretty sure if I'm not mistaken because it looks like the same color I went in and did orchid because I had I might probably had a little bit left on my palette I used my red grass games wet palette and I had some left over the orchid so I believe that's what I used for the lips and also because then it would look good with the hot pink colored hair so this is pretty much, so I'm pretty sure that covers everything for what I did. See, I did that, what I did for, oh, I remember. So for the highlighting here on the jacket, because when I did the Zenithal priming, none of this really came out with any sort of highlighting. This only did a tiny bit. And I went in also with some white. And because of the way that the creases in the jacket are with that straight line kind of deal going on, I sat there and went in, same, kind of same idea as what I did with the jeans, and did some thin down white with a fine detail brush and just kind of went little lines and stuff like that. And then went over with the Verdi Green, that Green Stuff World ink, and that's how I got the highlighting done for the jacket too. Kind of try to keep it simple, a less is more approach if you will. But yeah, so this is what I did to work on this model. So I hope you like the way that she came out. I'm actually very happy with how she came out. Uh, I'm, I'm, I like the way, I like the way it came out. It was a lot of, it was a lot of fun to paint. It really seriously was. So again, this is from Ouroboros Miniatures. This is a 75 millimeter model, and this one is called the Gunslinger. Okay. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed our tutorial and you want to see other ones, please feel free and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure to follow us on Twitch. And then if you want to find out our other social media links and other fun stuff, you can go to metalheadminis.com. So stay safe and healthy out there. We love you guys. We appreciate you. We love you. Thank you for the support and have a wonderful day.